so I just passed the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam a couple of days ago. And in this video, I want to talk about exactly what resources I used to study for the exam and exactly what I did to pass the exam on my first try. Uh, so with that being said, though, guys, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Make sure to drop me a like and subscribe to the channel. And let's go ahead and see exactly what resources I used to study for this exam. So when it comes to studying for exams and certifications, a lot of times I get overwhelmed because there's so many different resources I can choose from. It could be anything like Udemy, YouTube, doing my own Google research. And sometimes that feels overwhelming and I don't even start studying at all. So when it comes to my own personal preference, I needed something that was reliable and easy to follow, uh, something that was consistent and something that was really structured. And for those reasons, I decided to choose the AWS training course called Becoming a Cloud Practitioner. So the course itself is completely free and it's taught by AWS instructors. And pretty much it's broken up into three different parts and within each of these parts, there's different modules that go over different concepts that you'll see on the exam. So some of the huge benefits in taking this course is the fact that it's beginner friendly. You don't need to have any prior knowledge or experience with using AWS or the cloud to be able to take these classes. On top of that, too, they're taught by live AWS instructors. So you're able to ask any questions that you may have and they'll answer them in the moment as well. So the course is taught by these instructors and they're presenting PowerPoints that you pretty much follow along and throughout the entire uh, presentation, they'll have practice questions that you can also answer as well to test your knowledge. Um, so it's a great resource to start off and to use it. So I'll actually show you guys right now how to access this course. The first thing you need to do is go to aws.training. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, but once you're there, it'll take you directly to the homepage. The first thing you need to do is to sign in or create an Amazon account if you don't have one already. Uh, but once you're there, go back to the homepage and in a search bar in the top right corner, just type in becoming a cloud practitioner. And from here, you'll see the three different parts of, of the course itself. It's about three and a half hours each. And the courses are pretty much taught every other day. So for what I did for my own schedule, I pretty much took part one on Monday, part two on Wednesday and part three on Friday. And by the end of the week, I felt pretty comfortable uh, moving on to the next couple resources that I will talk about later on in the video. So during each of these sessions, I made sure to take some pretty good notes, especially for the concepts and the AWS services that I wasn't too familiar with. I think that's going to be huge uh, with also the other resources I talk about is to do your own research and pretty much look up different terms and, and services that you're not too familiar with. So for example, if I don't know what AWS DynamoDB is, I'll just Google it, type it in, AWS DynamoDB on Google. And the first result is going to be from Amazon, you know, AWS themselves. And it's pretty much the homepage explaining, or the webpage explaining exactly what Amazon DynamoDB does. And this will give you a perfect foundational definition and knowledge of exactly what that service does. And I pretty much did this exact thing, except for different services, uh, for any term or service that I had no idea what they did. And this will be enough uh, foundational knowledge for you to take into the exam uh, and to be able to answer any questions involving that service. So after I've taken these three courses, I moved on to a Quizlet. I'll leave a link in the description below to the exact Quizlet that I used. But this Quizlet is pretty much 200 different flashcards with pretty much like practice questions that you would see on the exam as well. I pretty much did every single flashcard that this Quizlet had and whatever question that I got wrong or the question used a specific like AWS service that I didn't know about, I made sure to stop where I was and to review the question if I got it wrong or also uh, look up the term or the AWS service that they're asking about the exact same way I just talked about. Um, I pretty much did that for the entire 200 flashcards. Um, it goes by pretty fast. It won't take you too long. Um, but I made sure to do that for the entire Quizlet. Um, and then moving on to the third resource I used was going to be the practice tests from Udemy. So I used six different practice tests from Udemy. I'll leave a link in the description below. But it's pretty much like a mock trial to pretty much test your knowledge and see where you're at uh, in terms of getting ready for this exam. Uh, for me personally, I took about two practice exams out of the six 
and I failed the first one. I reviewed all my, my answers and the questions that I got wrong. I took it again. Um, I got about around a, a 70 or so. Um, and I took a third one just in case, just to be prepared. And I passed that one. So once I passed that third practice test, I felt more than comfortable to continue and just go ahead and sign up for the, uh, the real exam and take it right up then and there. And I ended up passing as well. So one of the main benefits of doing this exact same technique, I pretty much call it the uh, review and research technique is to review any question that you got wrong on these practice exams, on the quizlets, on the classes, review any terminology you don't know and research them so you understand exactly what is going on so that if they ask these questions in the exam, you're able to answer them easily um, with your knowledge. So the six practice tests cost $20 and the reason why I think it's worth the investment is because spending that extra $20 is going to allow you to take multiple practice tests to ensure that you're confident going into the exam and able to pass on your first attempt. So the actual exam itself costs about $100 to take. And on top of that, this $20 practice test will make it about $120 total. But this ensures that you will pass it on the first try and that you're confident going into taking the exam. The last thing you want to do is pay $100 to take the exam and not take any practice tests and end up failing the exam and having to pay another $100 uh, to take the exam again. And you'll pretty much waste another $100. I'll rather pay... 120 to ensure that I pass it on the first try. Um, but after taking the Quizlet, if you're confident and you think you're you're good, uh, by all means, go ahead and take the exam. I just wanted to be extra safe and to, to feel more confident going into the exam. So those are pretty much the three different resources that I use to get ready for the exam in about seven days. And I think after watching this video, you guys will be well equipped uh, to take the exam within seven days as well. If this video helped you guys out, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also leave a comment down below if this video helped you out, if you guys are able to pass the exam on your first try. With that being said though guys, thank you so much for watching and make sure you guys stay tuned for more cybersecurity related content, career related content, and tech videos in general. With that being said though guys, I'll be out. Peace.